I'm your host, Mr. Mega Man Fan, and right now you are watching Digital Champ on the PC Engine Files. When I start up new games for the PC Engine Files, I tend to go into it blind without reading reviews. I just pick the name of a title that sounds interesting, and then I play it and find out exactly what it might be. And in this case, I was misled by the title because Digital Champ had me thinking this would be some sort of game where you try to get a high score by being the best at playing some digital challenge. For example, being the fastest to complete a maze or shoot down the most aliens, whatever it is, you would become the digital champ. In this case, they literally meant boxing champion. You are playing a digital boxing circuit like Mike Tyson's punch out, and you are trying to become the world champion of this boxing league. So what we have here is a case of somebody saying we could without saying whether or not we should. Because of course you could do a Mike Tyson's punch out on TurboGrafx-16. It was comparable to the Nintendo Entertainment System, aka the Famicom. And in some respects, it might even be argued that it was a little more powerful since some parts of it were 16-bit. It may have had a slightly bigger color palette and may have been capable of rendering somewhat larger sprites on the screen. So it was that bridge console between the 8 and 16-bit eras. It's kind of stuck in between both worlds. The PC Engine is a little bit NES and a little bit Super Nintendo. It's a little bit Sega Master System and a little bit Sega Genesis really in that awkward spot but it's definitely powerful enough to do a Mike Tyson's punch-out style game and visually you can't say it's not impressive because instead of the tedious left to right belt action boxing games that so often end up on old school consoles we do have the over-the-shoulder perspective of two boxers facing off against each other you are standing where the boxer is throwing your punches left and right. You can move side to side to avoid shots. You can throw body blows. You can throw right hooks and left hooks. You can raise your hands up to block a punch coming your way. It's got all of the features that you would want and a visual style that is somewhat appealing to look at. Unfortunately, once you get past that, Digital Champ starts to take a turn for the worse. The first thing that sets Mike Tyson's punch out, or just plain punch out, once they lost the Tyson license, is that all of the fights in that game are limited to three rounds. And if you get knocked down three times in one round, that's a TKO and the fight is over. So it keeps things moving very quickly. Win or lose, you know what the outcome is going to be, and that tends to lead to more excitement when you're playing. Here you have multiple three minute rounds round after round after round until you finally knock your opponent senseless or vice versa which arguably is more authentic to the marcus of queensbury rules of professional boxing as we know them as a sport but just because you can doesn't mean you should as i pointed out earlier just because you can mimic real boxing in a video game doesn't make it necessarily fun to be a video game. You want to take the elements of sport and translate them into a version of that that is not tedious to perform. Imagine playing Madden and having that last as long as a real NFL game. Would you sit there for two or possibly even three hours to play an entire game of Madden? No, you wouldn't, and they know that, which is why the clock runs fast. And yes, the clock does run fast here, but that doesn't stop it from becoming banal and repetitive after a while. On the plus side, they do allow you to power up your shot. If you hold down the 1 or the 2 button, you can release a more powerful punch, and you might think, well, that'll speed the fight up and I'll get a knockout quicker. But the problem is when you load up the punch, nine times out of 10, your opponent moves out of the way before it can connect. So you waste a whole lot of stamina and energy 
because you're going to get hit and you're not going to land your hit. So you're better off throwing the pitter-pat shots that at least accumulate damage over time as opposed to wasting all the effort to load up a punch and then have it miss completely. The other thing that's really missing from this game and that makes it suffer in comparison to punch out is that there are no tells. With your Mike Tyson's punch out opponents, they do little things like step back before they're about to throw a combo or drop their trousers when they're vulnerable. And then you know that you can land all of your shots and get a knockout blow, especially if you have a star saved up to throw that one big power shot. That's great. That's fun. It makes you learn what those tells are. And then you go after them when you see them so you can score a knockout and advance to the next opponent. Here, so far as I can tell, there are no tells. In fact, the only ways that you can even be certain that you're doing well is if you see your opponent's stamina drop and one of your punches lands a little bit of a mark on his face. They do kind of bruise up a little bit to let you know that you've hurt them, but just timing the punch and getting it to connect to land a bruise is a challenge in itself. Even when you're not wasting the time to power up a shot, you can still end up missing horribly because they dance so far back and forth in front of you. Again, realism, that's what a real boxing fight would look like. Nobody just stands still and wings punches unless they either have a supremely overconfident stance that, oh, I can knock anybody out with one shot. And sometimes people are actually good enough to do that. But most of the time, if you stand there flat-footed, you're the one who's going to get drilled, not the other way around. Which is why you don't see a lot of boxers do that. There is a science to keeping your feet moving at all times so you're never a stationary target. You want to leave yourself the leeway to lead on your power shot, whether it's your left or your right hand. So you take a stance with that foot forward and then you try to move in and out of range by dancing back and forth on your lead foot and moving laterally when necessary so that you can avoid the big return shots coming your way. You just don't get that kind of option in this game because you can move laterally, but you're not really moving forward or back. You're not moving in or out of your stance, even though your opponent is moving in or out of his stance, which makes it inherently unfair if you ask me. It's like they tried to do a 3D boxing game, but they got about two-thirds of the way there and then said, no, it's Mike Tyson's punch-out just souped up a little. It's good enough this way. I wish that it was. I feel there are elements of a good game hidden within Digital Champ, which is probably why, even though it's a Japanese exclusive game, they did eventually release it for the Wii Virtual Console. It's just, if this was selling for seven or 800 points back in the day, I don't think I would have spent the points in the Virtual Console shop because there are much better titles worth the money compared to this. It just falls short. If they had refined it just a little bit, made it a little more arcade and a little less realistic, made it a little more of a game where you could actually land a punch as opposed to flailing away furiously and getting nowhere, you'd have something here. One review that I read, I believe it was the Video Game Den said, some opponents in the early stages can't even be beaten unless you use the turbo rapid fire option. When you have to cheat a game to that degree, when you just have to hold down the turbo and auto fire to beat an opponent, what fun is it? It should involve skill, strategy, finesse, learning the timing, learning the tells, getting the striking pattern down and knowing how to throw the right punch at the right time, when to soften them up with the body blow and when to land the big KO. It's just not here. There's no chance you should buy Digital Champ unless you are just desperate to add another title to your PC Engine TurboGrafx-16 library. To make matters worse, the game insults you when you lose. Well, let me insult it right back. Punch out you are not Digital Champ. But thanks for trying. See you all next week.